my previous video, we saw about LoRa or low rank adaptation. LoRa is quite effective for deploying large models and is also fast for inference, thereby solving the inference problem for fine-tuned LLMs. However, when it comes to training, LoRa doesn't do the trick. For example, to fine-tune a LAMA 65 billion parameter model, LoRa needs 780 GB of GPU memory. That's about 16 A40 GPUs. The answer to this problem lies with QLoRa, where Q stands for quantization. The main motivation for QLoRa is to achieve fine tuning on a single GPU. It does this with only three innovations, namely 4-bit normal float, a new data type that is information theoretically optimal for normally distributed weights, double quantization to reduce the average memory footprint by quantizing the quantization constants, and page optimizers to manage memory spikes. In this video, let's look at all three of these novelties and understand QLoRa. Without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with quantization, which is fundamental to QLoRa. Simply put, quantization works by rounding and truncating in order to simplify the input values. For sake of simplicity, consider we are quantizing from a float 16 to int 4. Now int 4 has a range of minus 8 to 7. As we only have 4 bits to work with, we can only have 2 power 4, which is 16 bins, to quantize into. So any input float value needs to be mapped to the center of one of these 16 bins. Getting into neural networks, the inputs are tensors, which are large matrices, and they usually normalize between minus 1 and 1, or 0 and 1. Let's consider the case of a simple tensor with three values, say, minus point 0.967, 0 0.187, and 0.886. We are lucky with this example, as the values are distributed equally across the normalized range, which means when we quantize to int 4, each of these three numbers takes a unique bin. Let's take a slightly different example where the input values are no longer equally distributed in the input range. Let two inputs be close together with one far apart. If we now try to quantize to in 4, the first two numbers fall in the same bin, while the third one is fine. Oh, we don't want this. Why? Because if at all, you want to dequantize and convert back to float 16, the two numbers no longer convert back to unique values. In other words, we lost valuable information through quantization error. One way to overcome this problem could be to divide the input range into separate blocks. In this example, we have three blocks and we quantize each block separately with each having its own range. So now the two values, which are pretty close together, find different bins within a block and the third one never had a problem, so it's fine. By dividing into blocks, we independently quantized each block, and so each block comes with its own quantization parameters, which often is the quantization constant C. In this example, they are C1, C2, and C3. What we just saw is blockwise quantization which we illustrated with three blocks. But practically, QLoRa uses a block size of 64 for the weights for high quantization precision. Talking of the weights, 
One of the interesting properties of pre-trained neural network weights is that they are normally distributed centered around zero, which means that there's a very high probability for input values occurring close to zero rather than around a minus one or plus one. But our standard quantization to INFO is not aware of this fact, and so goes by the assumption that each of the 16 bins has an equal probability for getting the values. To address this problem with standard quantization, we can develop a slightly specialized type of quantization, which considers the normal distribution of the neural network weights. That is exactly what QLoRa does and names it Qubit Normal Float. In normal float, the bins are weighted by normal distribution and hence the spacing between two quantization values are far apart near the extremes of minus one and one, but close together as you get closer to zero. To throw some additional light on this, the green dots show the four bit normal float quantization versus the a standard 4-bit quantization shown in blue dots. Let's now move on to the next contribution of the paper, which is double quantization. Because the intention of QLoRa is to train on a single GPU, it's essential to squeeze every bit of memory as possible. If we recall blockwise quantization, we saw that we use 64 blocks to quantize the weights, and each of these blocks has a quantization constant C. So double quantization is the process of quantizing the quantization constants C for additional memory savings. And through double quantization, we gain half a bit per parameter on average. So the last and the third bit of puzzle is page optimizers. Now the page optimizers prevent memory spikes when we abruptly get a really long input, especially when we are working with a single GPU. Let's say we are working with documents and suddenly we have a really long document. When we use a single GPU for training, this spike in sequence length generally breaks the training because of memory issues. So to overcome this, the state of the optimizer, say Adam, is moved from the GPU memory to the CPU memory till the long sequence is read. Then, when the GPU memory is free, the optimizer state is moved back to the GPU. At high level, that's what happens if we leverage page optimizers. Now in terms of implementation, the page optimizers is part of the bits and bytes library and you can enable or disable it during your QLoRa training by simply setting the flag is paged on or off. Putting together the above mentioned three components, QLoRa efficiently uses a low precision storage data type, in our case usually 4-bit, and one computation data type that is usually bfloat16. Now what does that mean? Going back to LoRa, it means that in order to optimize for the memory, the weights of the model are stored in 4-bit. This enables us to load the weights into a single GPU, and the loaded weights are converted into bfloat16 for computation purposes of gradients during backpropagation. To link it to LoRa, let's go back and look at this equation from LoRa, where x is the input and w0 is our pre-trained model weights. A and B are low rank matrix decompositions. With QLoRa, our input x is B float 16. Our weights are stored as 4-bit. During computation of gradients, the weights and quantization constants go through 
a double dequantization, which is the reverse of quantization, it happens by first dequantizing the quantization constants C1 and C2. Then using the constants, we once again dequantize the weights to B float 16, which is used to compute the gradients and hence train the model or fine tune the model. If you're wondering how good is all this normal float stuff and double quantization, the authors of QLORA experimented with four data sets and show that in all four cases, using normal float and double quantization improves the mean zero shot accuracy of training compared to simply using float. In terms of the glue score, QLORA is able to replicate the accuracy of 16-bit LoRa and full fine tuning. The authors concluded that 4-bit QLORA with normal float data type matches 16-bit full fine tuning and 16-bit LoRa fine tuning performance on academic benchmarks with well-established evaluation setups. So if you're someone who's interested in fine tuning on a single GPU and would like to fine tune the model to match the performance of standard fine tuning on multiple GPUs, then QLORA is the way to go. I hope that was useful insight on QLORA. I will see you in my next video. Till then, take care.